Welcome to Gabriel's Gospel Grace, where you will receive wisdom and the Word of God. Now, I want to take everything you've just said and bring a parallel to it, square it up and squeeze it into a little box. Sure. Because for the viewer's benefit, at the moment you say, I do, and you walk down that altar and you're standing there and you're making this proclamation of marriage, you're going through that same process again. You're being cleansed of the past. The spillage is in the past and you're made new into one flesh. And at that point, you're joined together as a new person. You see the parallels here? And as we know, as an individual on our own, you've, you've highlighted that when you say you clean up after each other. But that's the mm -hmm. mopping up process that goes on. Mm -hmm. So actually, when you enter into marriage, the spillages of the past are forgiven. They are, as you say, confessed. Mm -hmm. And then you move forward anew. But something mm -hmm. Andy and I were talking about just before we started the broadcast was the fact that we're a... Uh, we're not old, are we, Andy? But we're at a time in life where we drop a few balls when it comes to memory things. <laughs> but in a way, spillage is the same thing. It's a drop. I mean, you don't spill something on purpose. It's something slips, something misplaced. It falls off the edge because you knock it. And that's the problem. This is what leads to the so-called potential resurrection of sin in our lives. It's not coming back. But the reality is when you have them moments, you can slip into old patterns. You can slip into old mindsets. You can you can suddenly go into that position of like Kirsty said, you know, you've dropped a glass. You, you don't want to confess it because you don't want to hurt that person's feelings. But being honest about it is what your marriage is based on. Mm -hmm. And by being honest, that instant forgiveness would come to mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, funny you mentioned the gla glass story. I used to have an assistant and a lot of the time they come and work at my house, but I was actually away for a few days. I remember when I came back, um, it wasn't my favourite glass, but I had a set of glasses. But all of a sudden, one of them was just slightly different to the others. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm, I, I mean, it could be a magic glass that decided to just change its shape just a fraction. But mm -hmm. I suspect what happened was exactly that, because it was kind of like, oh, the best thing is replace it and don't say a word. But as we know with God, God knows and sees everything. And your spouse typically will know you well enough to know something's not right mm -hmm. and if anything suspicion and doubts and the what ifs start to come to to mind this is what create this is how the enemy gets into the marriage <laughs> it's because you allow that crack to form same as when we doubt our own selves and of course the word fear is definitely at the center of that scenario the reason you won't confess something is fear fear of mm -hmm. hurting the one that you love fear mm -hmm. of falling into old patterns fear of not being at their level and their expectation fear of not being a good enough wife or good enough husband but as kirsty said best thing simply confess to your spouse get it off your chest and move on move forward because that's isn't that what god's doing with his andy kirsty yeah yeah um Definitely, um, I mean, from a um, from a gospel point of view, or uh, gospel life, Christian, um, you know, if the uh, if the if the if the truth is not in you, um, you're a liar, and you know you're a uh, you're a son or a father of lies. You know, uh, if the if the light that is in you is dark. And how great is that darkness? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if if you um, if you can't be honest, sometimes we have to be brutally honest, and um, yeah, it, uh, it can hurt. But I mean, if you're so um, so self-centered and proud that you can't even accept a little bit of a little bit of hurt, to be to be honest, um, you know, and I, I mean, you'll be well. That'll be gone in a minute, knowing that the the truth has come to light, and uh, that you're on an even keel. And you know, I mean, if, if you don't, if you, if you're not open and honest, um, and decent and loving, and not only with the one you love, I mean, uh, the word 
the word says itself. Uh, what is it? If uh, if you if you paraphrase, uh, if you pray only for those you love, uh, what difference is that? You know, the demons only care about people they care about. You know, uh, uh, if that's it, not only us, but if you if you're not in if you're not in that caring, open, honest way with everybody, then there's not much to you. You don't have much uh, integrity, mm. you know. And put this um, uh, this uh, if you spill it, wipe it clean. Um, discussion we're having tonight that could also that could also work in a um, friend kind of situation. Um, or not even so much, like not close friend, but um, brotherly acquaintance. Um, like the Lord, the Lord says, um, if you, if you, uh, well, uh, if you, if you're going to the altar to offer your gift, and you, uh, you remember that you've got a, a grievance with a brother, leave your gift where it is, and go and sort the grievance, and then go to the altar with a right heart, a right mind. Um, a serving, um, a serving spirit, and once you've made peace, go and offer your offer your gift um, to the Lord of Truth. After after you have, you know, after you've been truthful, been honest, been decent, Mop, and mopping apologize. up your yeah, mopping up your mess. Yeah. You yeah, created I, it. <laughs> you've created exactly. one small lie becomes a web of lies. Yeah. Now go and, fix it. <laughs> and then in that example, it, it it talks about if they've got something against you, so it's where you have wronged them, yeah. or or they perceive a wrong being done to them. Mm -hmm. And I think actually something that I found that's wonderful about being married is we notice and have access and um, freedom to uh, pick up on the blind spots on the places there we. We might not know ourselves that we're making a mess, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that level of relationship. I mean, that's what the Holy Spirit does to us as Christians. He whispers in our ears, like, actually, that wasn't that wasn't particularly a good thought, or or do you want to rethink that situation, yeah. or, and leads you into a place of we call it repentance, but it's just changing our minds over. <laughs> Choosing to act differently, react differently, and in the same way uh, as a married direction as well. Married, this is the way you walk you in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And as a married couple, we've got that same kind of um, influence so that we can go. Actually, I don't particularly like it when such and such. Um, it's it's not the best kind of attitude. Let's have a talk mm -hmm. about it. That. Um, I mean, it's not even a sit you down and come to Jesus kind of <laughs> meeting where you're trying to sort each other out. We're not holding a, what do we call it, one of those um, meetings to get get you back on the wagon or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Intervention. <laughs> That's the word. That's the word. But it's, it's just conversation and it's life. It's just like that. It's life together. And um, I'm going to say, I think. Growing, you know. Yeah, I think what you both touched on, I think Andy's kind of emphasised, is there is an aspect of integrity as well that needs to be employed in these situations. And just this week, uh, I was counselling someone on a situation where uh, they had to break some bad news to someone. And they said, you know, I'm not going to lie, I'm just going to be honest about it, so I think I'll probably send them a text. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. Because that's not, in that's not integrity. I said, you need a meeting. You need to do it face to face because you need to walk out with integrity and leaving your peace behind you. Mm. Trying to take the shortcut. It's not a lie, but it's not the right thing to do. It's not the strong thing to do. As you said, because that's what creates enmity, isn't it? Because then they can say, well, look, they didn't even have the decency to come and say it to my face. Now the integrity and reputation starts to be damaged. And I think that's what you're saying, especially in marriage, you can see them blind spots. You can have that conversation I had with them and said, listen, sweetie, I know that you're trying to do this in the nicest way you can, but as a person I like on YouTube says, facts don't care about feelings. <laughs> and sometimes to do the right thing, the factual thing, the truthful thing means just do it, a phrase I like to use a lot. But Andy, I'm going to come to you slightly here because 
with all the livestock and stuff that you deal with and animals and i'm sure there's problems all the time i live in farmland you know i see sheep collapsing and calves being born and getting stuck in all sorts of things you have to act lovingly but you don't spend time thinking about the feelings and emotions of how to deal with your animals when they're in distress or anything like that i mean how do you think that's part of the issue that to do the right thing the loving thing as you said ripping off the band-aid because once it's done it's done being in a, a real life scenario like you are and i find this with farmers generally because you're in a real life scenario you're more pragmatic and practical in solutions of problems whereas society now is much more i mean if you're not doing it deliberately to deceive people then we come back to feelings uh, my feelings of doing the, the deed or your feelings of when i do the deed how you might feel about it do you think that's an obstacle in today's marriages that we are a feeling based promoting society now uh, I mean we're definitely a feeling based um, society. do I think it's a problem it shouldn't be and because um, I mean what's what's the truth you know um, remember the saying is the truth hurts and i think for a lot of people yeah. it does and um, that's that's why people avoid the truth <laughs> yeah um i mean you you know if you, if you want to protect somebody's feelings and not say something to them uh, but you know you really should say something to them and um, well where is it i mean uh uh scripture uh, what is it uh has in james is it in james four wait a minute it might not be in any way it's in my head. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. You know, um, if you know Amen. that you can do it, and, um, uh, oh, but poor pet, what about your Well, and you're lying, aren't you? Um, and you're not helping you or that person. Um, and it would be much better if somebody would fall out with you over something, but then realise... Um, you know that that's what you said that that the truth would begin to sink and they'd begin to think on it and then something would happen even if they never spoke to you again that doesn't matter that's that's not what it's about if, if you know if that word even if it took a year a spark came from it well you know and so feelings yeah oh there's a bit much of that nowadays isn't there i mean when you're Father, grab a hold of you and leather you from the back of the knees up to the back of the head. He wasn't really worried about it when we were younger, was he? <laughs> yeah. I, I did in a in a um, work um, information kind of meeting quite recently, and of course, it's all diversity and inclusion, and it's all about you know um, basically minding each other's feelings. Um, this is the crux of it. And the question was, how far is too far? And okay. now the, the answer to that was really, well, it's so subjective. <laughs> it really depends on the person, the mood they're in, the, the attitude, mm -hmm. um, whether or not the intent's malicious or, or, you know, so many factors of it. And, you know, we're talking about speaking the truth, but in Ephesians, I think it's chapter four, it speaks about speaking the truth in love. love now yeah. love has to be our motivation right mm. and ultimately that means making sure that we're in the right place mm. and coming from the right place so sorting out our own mess and cleaning up our own mess before we go and start talking into somebody else's mess and trying to point out their flaws it's the same as the plank in one person's eye the other. Yeah. The speck in the other um yeah. it's exactly the same Well, sorry about that, but we do keep having this problem. And of course, they are a long way away. So the internet isn't always perfect, but we have them back. So let's continue. So Kirsty, back over to you. Where were we? Yeah, I think we're talking about um, speaking the truth and love. It has it in Ephesians, Ephesians 4 to speak the truth in love. And if love isn't our motivation, then we've really got <laughs> no business being in other people's business. Um, and I think it's got this kind of, self uh, management aspect to it in that um, we've, 
we can't go and deal with somebody else's mess if we've got mess of our own. And talking about, you know, cleaning up after ourselves, if we make a mess and clean it up, then we have to make sure our hearts are in the right place, that we're coming out of love, not out of, I don't know, frustration of our own or, or bitterness or any other thing. Um, it's like the the example that Jesus gave us. So, you know, the the guy who's pointing out the speck in the other mm. chap's eye when there's a massive plank in his own eye. It's like, look, you, you can't be pointing out other people's messes and telling them to clear their own mess up when you've got a massive mess of your own that needs to be dealt with. But I think if you're dealing with your mess, right, <laughs> And you're aware of it and you're getting that dealt with that fuels you up with compassion for dealing with other people you know if the guy hit with the plank had sorted out the plank then the speck in somebody else's is such a small thing compared mm -hmm. with the thing that he yeah. had to clean up um that he might have some wisdom some uh, some compassion some love some uh, more than just uh, pointing out the faults Mm -hmm. in others 